about to pay. Yeah, what do you study? Um, business marketing. Business marketing. Yeah. And are you interested in some social areas? Have you ever heard, thought of that? Not yet? I thought about it, okay. but I don't really know where to start. Okay. And why are you here? Ties to the World is an orphanage. It supports an orphanage. It's, um, we did San Diego Garden. We were there when they hired an artist, and the kids painted pictures that were going to be put on postcards, uh, notebooks, and to sell, to make the, the Ogar sustainable. So what is the difference between an uh, orphanage in Guatemala that is coming up with income-generating activities? To, to support, uh, to pay the salaries, right? Versus a traditional charity. What is the difference there of a social enterprise versus a charity? Sustainability. Sustainability. But a charity is sustainable also. You go to church and you, you ask people to give money. It's, we, all, we all support programs. Yes? And in this orphanage, who are our clients, quote unquote? The children or the managers of the orphanage? You're teaching them to be self-sufficient or you're teaching the teachers to be self-sufficient? The teachers to be self-sufficient. So and there are two types of teachers, right? There is a entrepreneurial teacher and then there is a teacher, you give me a salary and I'll perform. What is the difference? orphans, will they benefit from having an entrepreneurial teacher? Huh? We know entrepreneurial teachers. We have met some in our life. Have we met some non-entrepreneurial teachers? Yes. Disastrous. Right? Not your father either. Waste of time. So, I would like to ask Nick, what is he doing about entrepreneurial teachers in Africa? Well, I guess you're directing us there to, uh, yeah, one of, one of the things we're doing, and, and we have so many, it's hard to know where to start, is uh, promoting the idea of entrepreneurial education at, at the teacher level. And in fact, I guess what Martin's alluding to is you can come up with a great idea and say, yeah, you know, this is an entrepreneurial model, but unless you've got the people to actually implement it, it can't really work. So it's, everything starts with the teachers, really, because the, the teachers are are the people who have the day-to-day -day connect with the students. If the teachers don't get it, if the teachers don't understand how their subject can really be applied, their students can never really understand how that subject can be applied, and it just becomes a paper-chasing exercise. Um, so we've set up something which we call the uh, Pan-African Entrepreneurial Teachers Competition, uh, and every year we kind of uh, scour Africa and for, for the most entrepreneurial teachers, so we can kind of take these isolated examples and show that you know that there's always some kind of excuse. And you know, I, I would never knock teachers, but if I think you know, teachers have a tough time in many of these countries, and and often they sort of they, they feel they're not getting the support, or you know, they don't have the resources. How can you be an entrepreneurial teacher if you don't have resources? But almost this is kind of you know what the essence of being an entrepreneurial teacher is working out what you can do when you've got no resources to, to bring your subject to life and actually make it mean something so you can get the students to re really understand it and start doing it uh, for themselves. Uh, and we just keep finding every year fantastic examples of schools where, you know, th there's nothing there. Their buildings are half falling to pieces.
pieces. Uh, you know, the students are meant to pay fees, but the students don't have any money, so they can't pay any fees. So the teachers get paid several months late. But yet these teachers and the ones who are really entrepreneurial and the ones who care find just uh, creative ways of of helping to kind of facilitate learning and facilitate change. So I'm, you know, just thinking of one example, uh, kind of a, a school in Kenya who kind of came out as, uh, I think, a second prize winner in one of these competitions. You know, this problem of parents not having any money to pay school fees and regular schools, excluding this kind of system, rely on these kind of fees. Um, was kind of crippling them. So the, the, the head teacher kind of came up with this concept of basically teaching the, the kids about how to raise poultry, giving the kids, you know, a chicken or two on, you know, the basis that they would give a chicken or two back to, to the program and sending that back with their families. So the, the students acted as sort of intermediaries, basically educators for their own parents. And what they were learning in school were lessons that were being applied back home. So rather in this case than the school act itself actually running businesses, it's uh, 120 students, each had 120 businesses going on at their, their family headquarters, family home. Um, and the money from this was then being used to pay for their school fees, so all the kids were getting an education. I think this is what we're trying to get, get at with the idea of entrepreneurial teachers. That just because that, you know, the, the teacher who set that up didn't have the resources to actually build a decent school, if she could get her hands just on a few chickens, which uh, you know is something probably most uh, accessible even in some of the worst areas of the developing world, then you can start doing something that through its own sustainability <coughs> creates a snowball effect and grows and grows uh, and, and ultimately benefits you know a large number of students. Um, so yeah, that, that's just one example. And uh, I don't know, do you want to... Yeah, just to, just to wrap things up, we are seeing that it is possible to work with extremely poor adolescent girls. Less than two dollars a day. Does anybody know, you know that poverty is defined by a poverty line. I think it was actually defined here by uh, the New Deal or something, or the Great uh, the Society. Was it, was it the New Deal or was it Johnson? It was the New Deal. The New Deal. So they decide, they said this is an income level below which you are officially poor and you are you have access to government uh, and so poverty and the World <coughs> Bank has taken up this on and um, they have defined poverty and this is a line of income okay and then there is extreme Poverty. And how is extreme poverty measured? We hear it about it all the time. How is extreme poverty measured by the World Bank and the U.S. government and France and Italy and <coughs> in dollars? Less than dollars a day. But it has, you know what? You won't believe this. It's measured in calories. 2,500 calories. What happens to a person that is working that does not have this? This equals hunger. Okay? Governments don't like to talk about hunger. Okay? But the truth is that in the pyramid, how many billion people in the world? Six billion. And how many at the bottom of the pyramid? Good guess. Four. So you have two plus four. That is the situation in the world. Pretty bad, huh? Pretty bad. And how many of these four billion are children? Good guess? Good guess? 